Welcome to Beantown Fantasy Football. It's week eight. This is the tight end edition. Happy Halloween to all you watching out there as well. I'd like to introduce Mark Fury. I'm the Jaker. Uh, we're missing BG and Ace Wonder. They'll be back with us next week. All right, going into week eight, tight end. Who do you like? I like Vernon Davis this week going against the Indianapolis Colts. He's finally starting to look like that first round pick of a few years ago after being dangerously close to being considered a colossal bust. And speaking of first rounders who are almost a bust, Alex Smith showed signs of life last week. He looked like an absolutely phenomenal quarterback, hitting Davis for three touchdowns in the second half. Now, I don't expect that to happen again. Three touchdowns out of a tight end is extremely rare. But Smith didn't look like a fluke. He may prove to be in the end, but he was making all the throws, showed a good strong arm, he was accurate, he was making great decisions, and he knew how to find his top weapon in Davis. So I look for Davis to be a top tight end this week and probably for the rest of the year, assuming that Smith holds on to the job and Sean Hill doesn't get back on the field. I don't know if he keeps playing like he did last week. I don't think that's going to be much of an issue. Uh, who are you sitting? Well, we all know that I love this guy, but I'm sitting Brent Selleck, the Magnum TE. He's, he looked fantastic earlier in the year, but since McNabb has come back, the offense hasn't been as good as it uh, was under uh, Kevin Cobb especially with Selleck. He, uh, last week, McNabb only threw for a little over 150 yards, and Selleck only had 8 yards. That's not the kind of production I want from my tight end. Okay, my pick for tight end going into week 8 is Jeremy Shockey of the New Orleans Saints. Uh, Drew Brees has lit up a lot of different defenses this year. A lot of wide receivers have done well, but the one consistent has been Jeremy Shockey. 100 yards last week, didn't find the end zone. I look at this to change this week. He's going up against the Atlanta Falcons, who uh, their secondary is virtually non-existent. They're giving up an average of 250 yards passing uh, you know, each week, and that is going to mean really good things for Jeremy Shockey. I look at him to be 100 yards, a score, uh, you know, Drew Brees, He's not going to be stopped by Atlanta. Yeah, um, not only Jeremy Shockey, start all your Saints this week. That Atlanta pass defense is just terrible. They uh, The only reason that their numbers uh, look as good or as decent as they are is because they played San Francisco and Miami, two teams who couldn't pass the ball at all at that point in the season. So they'd be uh, right around, maybe not quite as bad as Tennessee, but they'd probably be second worst if they had to play anyone who could throw the ball at all. Okay, obviously I'm going to be benching somebody, and that guy is going to be in the same game. I am benching Tony Gonzalez. I can't say it enough. Atlanta's back is to the wall. I don't see TG finding many openings, and I do not see him finding the end zone. Um, Gonzalez should be gonzo from your lineup this weekend. Uh, that's kind of tough to agree with. I mean, yeah, he hasn't been playing as well, and the Falcons as a whole just haven't been playing as well in recent weeks. They got a win against the Bears, but the offense just wasn't clicking but at the same time Gonzalez is an elite tight end and with bye weeks and injuries it's really hard to sit him um, if you have a, a strong backup or some, you have someone like a Vesante Shanko then go ahead and do it but for the most part if you have Gonzalez he, it's pretty much him or nothing all right well moving on to team defense who do you like in week eight well I like the New York Giants against the Philadelphia Eagles I mean sure they're, they're the Giants and they were one of the top defenses going into the season, but their last two games against New Orleans and Arizona have really left a sour taste in their owners' mouths. Yeah. But I'm telling you, this week, it's safe to go back to them. The Eagles, they're, they're a pretty good team. They're above 500, but the offense just isn't anything spectacular, especially with Westbrook probably being out. Like we said before, we expect McCoy to have a pretty good game, maybe even find the end zone, but I'm not a big fan of Donovan McNabb. I never really have been. And this Giants defense is going to be able to shut him down, especially uh, with their so-so receivers, aside from uh, Deshaun Jackson. Uh, I look for the Giants to bounce back. They're a much better team than they showed the last couple of weeks, and they're not playing a powerhouse this week. You're safe starting them. Yeah, I think uh, the Giants finally get back on track. They're going to dish out some payback for the last couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, I don't see big things out of the passing game with Philadelphia. Who are you going to bench at Team D? Well, I'm benching the New York Jets against the Miami Dolphins. Last time they, uh, the, the two teams faced off on Monday night, the Jets gave up 31 points. Uh, I don't really see that changing. Chris Jenkins is out. 
and the uh, Dolphins are going to be able to run that Wildcat right down the Jets' throats, especially without their big man right up the middle. Uh, Chad Henney has a, has a big arm, and he showed it off last time they played uh, each other on that uh, Monday night game. He had a long touchdown again. If he can catch it, he'll probably do it again. He's going to get his chance to take a shot downfield. And I guess I really um, I don't like the Jets this week. They're, they've been kind of iffy recently. They came out on fire, but that Jenkins injury hurts him. And you got to be really selective when you're playing them. And I really don't like this matchup with Miami's excellent running game. Yeah, I'm going to second you on that. And I'm going to start with my sit first, actually, because uh, we were talking about this earlier. And... You know, we came down here and said, who are you sitting the defense? Well, I'm sitting the Jets. And then he asked me, I said, I'm sitting the Jets too. And we tried to put our heads together and figure out why it was that we were sitting the Jets uh, and couldn't find anybody else. And the reason was what? Well, the ones who you want to sit, they're obvious sits. Of course, you're going to sit Tennessee. You're going to sit Jacksonville. You're going to, if you own Cleveland, you're in trouble. And then the other, uh, on the other side of it, all of these decent uh, to well above average defenses all have strong matchups so you should be in pretty good shape for defense for uh, most of the teams um, maybe Minnesota I could kind of argue you should sit with Winfield being out but aside from Minnesota and the Jets Carolina's I don't see... no very strong matchup either I've... no but Carolina's one that not too many people are holding on to either they're playing Arizona I kind of see that as a no-brainer to sit them yeah, two team league you got the yeah, if you're starting two defenses, then you know you gotta start pretty. Two much defense out. league, thank you. If you if you're starting two defenses, then you know starting sits don't matter. You play who you got. No, I agree, and you know we definitely agree on the on the New York Jets. Um, you know it's just it's just not going to happen this week for them. But let me tell you who I am starting at team defense. These guys look a little bit better than most too. When we're talking about this, the San Diego Chargers. Now, they're at home, and they're also playing against Jamarcus Russell and the Oakland Raiders. And uh, if you even know this, uh, very little about fantasy football or football in general, you know that Oakland is just horrible this year. Uh, they can't do anything. And certainly San Diego, they've their defense has not been what most people were expecting this year. I think they get back on track against Oakland. All right, so sit the Jets, start the Chargers. Uh, most other teams... You know, should work out the same, but keep your eye on those two either way. Uh, for Mark Fury, I'm the Jaker. This has been the Beantown Fantasy Football Week 8 Tight End and Team Defense Edition. We'll see you here again next week. Please keep those questions and comments coming, and thanks for watching.